The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Hello and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tysig, my partner, Malik Hill. We are into, I would say, my favorite time of the year. We got college football, the NFL, college basketball, NBA. Two favorite sports to watch, both pro and college going on at the same time. Um, we just saw Michigan and Michigan State start their uh NCAA basketball season, um, kind of some some question marks on each team. We'll probably try to do a full college basketball preview next week, hopefully, because uh, it kind of kind of crept up on us. Um, let's let's talk about Michigan and Michigan State right off the bat. Malik, how did you feel seeing Michigan back in action? What do you think of this team? Where do you think they're going? Obviously, the first game of the season was against Purdue Fort Wayne, um, so you know. Hard to take away a lot, but what did you see from that team? It'll take me oh, – here we go. Switch mics. <laughs> we'll do it on the fly. It will take me uh, a little bit of time to get used to jumping into college basketball season because I'm still so focused on football. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was kind of weird seeing Michigan basketball playing, but they look good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm not like I'm not getting super excited. I'm not. It's this just the first game of the season. Yeah. Well, looking like this team obviously anchored by Hunter Dickinson coming back. Hopefully, you know, making another run. What do you think is needed for this Michigan State team or Michigan team to make a good run? Because they're talented, but now they're they're a bit younger. Um, besides Hunter, what do you think needs to happen? Well, they, they need Jalen Llewellyn to be once again be a transfer point guard that can fit in and do the job that a point guard needs to do in this system, make good reads, score when they have to. And the young guys have to be able to step up. Mm -hmm. And so far it looks like at least one of them will be able to consistently. And that's Jawan Howard's son, Jet Howard, who was a, f a big-time recruit, four-star guy. Honestly, I don't understand why he wasn't a five star. Mm -hmm. It it kind of shows the weird discrepancy between like recruiting rankings and different talent levels of recruits. Yeah, because last year Caleb Houston, he reclassed to last year's class, twenty twenty one, instantly became a top ten five star guy. And in my opinion, Jet Howard is already better than Caleb Houston as a player. Yeah, like it it's it's not even like a comparison. Mm -hmm. Jet Howard. He looks a hundred times more confident already. Right, shooting the ball, he can take it off the dribble, which Caleb Houston couldn't do. He has to learn on defense how to like stay in tune and how to make certain rotations. But he's he's a hit so far. He had thirty in their exhibition. He had he had twenty one against Purdue Fort Wayne. He might be the leading scorer on this team, if not Hunter Dickinson, Jet Howard. Looks like he's good. He might be Big Ten freshman of the year. Yeah, if he keeps playing like this, mm -hmm. which is hard for a freshman. But last year, Malachi Branham at Ohio State showed if you have the talent and the confidence, you can be a consistently high level player in college basketball from the jump. Yeah, and Jet Howard looks like one of those guys. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they'll also have to de depend on Kobe Bufkin, sophomore two guard, who also has shown flashes. Mm -hmm. Terrence Howard is back for his junior season. And they got some freshmen off the bench. And Joey Baker, the shooter from Duke, who hit three threes in their first game uh, on mo Monday. I hope he can be more consistent than streaky. Mm -hmm. Duncan Robinson had his moments of being, like, really dominant as a shooter and then falling off. Right. It'd be great if Joey Baker could stay consistent. But mm -hmm. they have the pieces to make a run. Yeah. They, um, they have all the pieces. So it's kind of Hunter Dickinson and Jet Howard. 
typically what I like to see from a college team, at least, is to have at least three guys. Do you think it would be Jalen Llewellyn as that third guy or one of the younger guys? I think it it will either be Kobe Bufkin or, or Jalen Llewellyn. It, it, it will be very important for Jalen Llewellyn to be that guy at times because he's going to have the ball in his hand so much. He's going to be the main decision maker a lot. But Jawan Howard is also going to trust Kobe Bufkin a lot of times. to If he gets a rebound on the defensive end, mm-hmm. go. yeah, Go, attack, and if you can't get an open shot, then pass it. Kobe's going to be tr- trusted to be one of those scorers mm-hmm. after Jet Howard and Hunter Dickinson. Yeah, So I'd say it's between them two, but I think it m- might be Jalen Llewellyn at the end of the day because he has the he'll have the ball in his hands more than anybody. Yeah, and he'll be making the decisions. Mm-hmm. Now we won't see Michigan play anybody significant until we get to the end of the month where they'll play Virginia. Um, so they got some time to settle in. On the, the other hand, Eastern will be interesting just because they have Imani and Noah Farrakhan. But you know. yeah, I, I guess I, I kind of forgot about Imani to be <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> um, so yeah, that could be interesting. Um, on the other hand, Michigan State, and they, I mean, they beat North Arizona for their, you know, intro game, like most college basketball teams. And Michigan State is usually, you know, they're playing in the Air Force Classic this year or the Armed Force Classic. They've been playing in that for years where they usually get a top opponent and then they have a soft schedule the rest this of the way. This first month's schedule is brutal. <laughs> it is It is crazy. <laughs> I, I love it because yeah. you don't see very many teams do that. Uh, in the beginning of their season, Michigan State gets, has to play uh, Gonzaga um, on Friday night. That will be fun to watch. I'll be watching that one for sure. Yeah. Then the, the yearly champions classic. Right. They got Kentucky this year. Yep. And Kentucky is one of the best teams in the country. And then they're going to play Villanova. And then they're going to play Alabama. And they're in a lot of, like like you said, they're in the champions classic. And then they're in this tip-off games. Um, which are usually, yeah. you know, popular teams. As Alabama well. Phil Knight Invitational. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, Michigan State is normally in these kinds of tournament realms and things like that, but that is a wild start to their season, and they could either prove yeah. themselves or show how much growth this team is going to have to make. Because although I think Michigan and Michigan State are in similar realms, I think Michigan State has a little more work to do. Yeah, I, I'd say Michigan has a higher ceiling. Yeah. And M- MSU's floor is high. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they should be a, a solid, consistent team right. in the Big Ten. But I don't know if they have that next level. They don't have a Hunter Dickinson. They don't have a guy that, like, blows you away. Dude, we don't do the, not even sure if they have a Jet Howard, honestly. Yeah. A guy that you can give the ball and can just explode. Mm-hmm. Now, they have – I mean, they got some young guys that came in that hopefully can do something. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how long – it takes guys like Jackson Kohler, um, 6'9 forward. Hopefully, you know, can do something because... He's the X factor in my opinion because I, I don't think there's any other freshman big man that has the footwork and overall skill in the post that he has. Right. And the problem with Michigan State that they've had for a, a little while now, um, whereas for, for before that time, it was like Michigan State was always going to be able to dominate in the paint. Not necessarily always scoring, but like just enforcers, the Xavier Tillmans, guys like that, they were on this team doing the dirty work. I'm still nervous about Matty Sissoko. He's now a junior. Feels like he's been on this team forever. When he was a freshman, he had a lot of potential. He was he was so raw. Haven't yeah. I haven't seen much growth. So and especially like when you look at in the Big Ten. Like you got to go up against Hunter Dickinson, uh, what's his name, Jackson Davis Price from Indiana. Like it's a uh, Trace Jackson Davis. Trace yeah. Jackson Davis. I always Jackson get Davis it messed Price. up. <laughs> I always get it max- mixed up. Mixed up. Um, but yes, like Big Ten is yeah. known for the Big, big Ten is always a big a big man gauntlet. It always yeah. is. And I know that's not really where the game is played these days in college, but at the same time, like you see those big men like last year, Mark Williams, guys like that, that, you know, changed the game. Paolo Bancaro, like those guys helped you make deep runs. And I just, I don't know. I don't know where that's going to come from. The forward position has always been fine for Michigan state. You know, we got Joey Hauser, Malik Hall, like 
they're okay. All those guys are, you know, fine. Um, but the the guard position is going to be interesting. Do, just, you, do you have a favorite guard on this team? No. <laughs> no. And that's my – that's always been my problem with Michigan State. I don't like any of their guards half the time. Um, but – AJ Hoggard is just a guy that I've never gotten behind. It's just one of those things. Uh, Jay Nakin's recovering from an injury. We'll see what he can do. I do like Pierre Brooks, but he's, I mean, he's not like a point guard. Um, he's a two guard. But the nice thing about uh, State's guards is they are fairly big for the most part. Um, besides maybe Tyson Walker, of course, he's a little bit smaller. Trey Holloman is kind of smaller, too. He's like 6'2". Yeah, but how much time is he really going to get? I I honestly think, I, I hope they play him more. Yeah. As the season goes on. Because I don't, Tyson Walker and A.J. Hoggard, I, I'm sure they're going to play like 30 minutes a game at least, but yeah. you should have someone to come in and give you a change of pace yeah. or something. A.J. Hoggard, he's just become one of those guys that like, you know what you're getting out of him. And I, I don't think there's like a ceiling to it. I feel like we've already hit that ceiling, I guess. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot of question marks for this team. I think they're gonna be decent, uh, but it, it might be a, a typical Michigan State team where they need time to figure it out. And once they figure it out, they might be dangerous because I, I don't think it's gonna be, like I said, I don't see one guy that's a step above everybody else. And so, in that respect, it may be a classic Izzo team where they have to play team basketball. Hopefully, they can all be on the same page. Hopefully, they can move the ball well and make their shots. Because that's the other thing Michigan State's had a problem with. They move the ball well, but they can't shoot the three very well. And Joey Hauser was the only guy last year. And it took him, it felt like all season to even make a three. So He's starting off hot, which is encouraging. Yeah. So, if he can keep it up, maybe he'll be that, you know, that that guy but i don't know it's it's gonna be interesting and luckily like they get a lot of big teams right off the bat so they're gonna get punched in the mouth early and we'll have to see how they respond but it it's interesting you know one main problem i think they have Mm -hmm. a guy that i've defended and championed and hyped up for the past three years because he showed great flashes as a freshman yeah I have no idea what Malik Hall is anymore. Yeah. He uh, he should be like an all conference like 15 and not, 15 and 8 or 15 and 9 guy. Yeah. Like a dependable like give him the ball in the post or the mid post area, hits a few threes, dunks on a few people. He should be that type of guy, but it it seems like it's never maybe it's a confidence thing. Yeah. It seems like his confidence might, has dropped some in the past year or two. Mm-hmm. But I he should be the X factor. Yeah. And I thought he was going to be, and it just hasn't happened. So if that happened, I think the ceiling would be pretty high. Yeah. But I, at this point, I don't know if I can believe in it anymore. Yeah. I, and I think that's the problem with Michigan State over the last few years is they get all these talented guys in, and they just, whether it's they haven't worked out or they're not getting their full potential because of coaching, who knows? Um, it just hasn't, it hasn't worked out. So – well, it, again, it's a wait and see kind of deal. Like I said, next week hopefully we'll get into more of a preview because Big Ten's going to be tough again this year. Illinois improved, Indiana's improved. Yeah. I mean, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan has been a lot of people's like predicted top three in right. the Big Ten. Yeah, and there's, I mean, there's always a lot of options for who those next two teams, few teams could be. Um, and the Big Ten's going to uh, send a lot of tournament teams, but I mean, I think Michigan State will make it there, but it's going to be tough. And uh, already on Friday, I mean, Drew Timmy stayed at Gonzaga. Yeah. And Oscar Sheebway, I think he's still injured, Mm -hmm. so they might not have to play him, but they got some shooters. Yeah. They let it fly. So, yeah. And they got some more talent. Yeah, thank goodness that Sheebway is still hurt because, like I said, big men, that's going to be the toughest part for Michigan State. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we'll we'll see. Uh, moving on to college football, Michigan State. They actually took care of business. They beat Illinois. Wow, beat a ranked team. 
Listen, I, Illinois deserves a big fat F for how they played in that game. <laughs> Michigan State responded to every mistake they made, and they des- Michigan State deserves credit too. Yeah. But Illinois, what, what, a, what a disappointment. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was just bad. Yeah. Um, Michigan State still kind of in the hole looking for a bowl game. Uh, I don't know. I, I, like I've said before, I, I'm kind of done with this team, to be honest. It's unfortunate. Kind of knew that there was a chance that this would happen, but just upsetting, I guess. Um, <clears throat> and then Michigan, they also took care of business. I mean, it was a little rough at the start. It was kind of weird. Yeah. Rutgers gave them, they punched him in the mouth early. Yeah, Michigan was down at half. 17, Michigan took them lightly. 17 to 14. Um, and then they erupted in the third quarter. Put up 20, 28 points in the yeah. third quarter. 38 nothing run in the game. And ended up winning the whole game 52 to 17. Blake Corum, another 100 yards, two touchdowns. It's just, it's his thing at this point. Um, he is up in that Heisman candidate race. Um, he's ahead of guys like Derrick Henry, um, and other guys that have the same stats or similar stats to him that won the Heisman as a running back. So he's right up there. So if Michigan can keep it going, they may have a Heisman winner on their hands. I think he'll probably go to New York, but I think the only chance he wins is if they beat Ohio state. That's the only way. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, so with that win, Michigan finally gets into the college football playoff rankings. Um, they are third. Yeah. Correct. Um, and with Alabama losing to LSU, which was wild, uh, TCU has jumped into there. Um, so now it's it's kind of crazy. Tennessee lost to Georgia. So Georgia's number one. Ohio State's two. Michigan is three. And TCU is four. Thank goodness I don't have to think about Alabama. <laughs> Two losses. I hope that just kicks Alabama out. It, it necessarily doesn't, uh, but I'm hoping that it does. Yeah, there, there are a lot of people hoping the dynasty is done. Mm-hmm. But we'll, we'll have to see. I can't imagine the dynasty being over. Yeah, but... th- this team just has a lot of flaws. Play calling is weird. Nick Saban is going to have to cycle through some more coaches. Yeah, I feel bad for Bryce Young. He is the best quarterback Alabama has had. He's going to be a top pick, so I don't feel that bad for him. I'm a, but but I'm I'm just saying he's he is so elite. Like it, he is the reason that they're even like really good at this point. Mm-hmm. They still have a lot of talent, but they like I said they're so flawed. And Bryce Young just keeps them above water. Like he didn't play great against LSU. Mm-hmm. He didn't handle the pressure <clears> great, <throat> but he he's he's so good. Yeah, he's just so good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then going back to Michigan real quick, Michigan will play Nebraska this week. Um, they're favored by 31 points should be no big deal. Then they play Illinois who obviously played bad against Michigan state, but that should be no big deal. And that leads up to the end of the month where they play Ohio state. Yeah. And that will be the game. Um, yeah, that, that has a lot of implications just like last year. So we'll have to we'll wait and see. Not too much uh, other news for college football. That's why we said we'll probably do college basketball preview next week, um, as college football is kind of rounding out. Um, was there any other games that you wanted to talk about or bring so, up? So Clemson, they're frauds. <laughs> yeah, well, they're frauds. I mean, a lot of people kind of already figured that. Yeah, Dabo, he's uh he has a lot of decisions to make after this season. He's aligned himself to DJU like fiercely. Mm-hmm. And we'll just keep saying he's our guy, he's our guy. But I think DJ, whenever he runs into a little bit of like, how do I describe it? Whenever stuff starts hitting the fan, mm-hmm. he falls apart. And he never responds with like, he never goes to a higher level. And Dabo staff is also very inexperienced and he just likes elevating people to positions inside the program. Yeah. He needs to find some really high-level coordinators and get this back on track because it's not looking good with all that talent he has. Yeah, uh, Notre Dame isn't great, but they took Clemson like they they just beat the mess out of them. It wasn't close the entire game. Yeah, so good for them. Oregon creeping up. Mm-hmm. Bo Nix is still balling. 
they got a chance. They got a big schedule coming up. They got to play Washington, and they got to play Utah. So, Like you said, LSU, they beat Alabama. I still don't think they're a great team. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of momentum, and they're just good. They're a two-loss team. But people are going to hype them up because of the Alabama win and if they keep winning. Right. Uh, yeah, besides that, USC, I still don't fully believe in them because Caleb Williams is just a absolute monster at quarterback, mm-hmm. and he's winning them these games. Their defense has given up a lot of points to teams that they shouldn't be giving up points to Yeah, because they're not a whole team yet. Mm-hmm. Like I think UCLA is a better overall team than them right now. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, I do have to point out, I can't believe I'm saying this. I kind of feel bad for Texas. And it's not necessarily Texas, I guess. I guess it's more so B. John Robinson. But if Quinn Ewers was the quarterback of this team for the whole year, yes, he makes a mistake here and there like we saw um, two weeks ago. Yeah, there's, there's a they probably would have beat Alabama. But, like, B. John Robinson is just dicing teams up. And it's... It's fun to watch, actually. Yeah, he's, he'll, he'll be the first running back drafted, most likely. Him or Jameer Gibbs, one yeah. of them. Um, Drake May is still a monster as a freshman. Mm-hmm. He better be in New York. And I just want to mention a few teams that have completely embarrassed themselves and are off to horrible starts. Manny Diaz in Miami. Mm-hmm. Not Manny Diaz. Uh, T was their last coach. Oh, my gosh. See, I, I do this once a week. I forget a coach's name every – a coach or a player, I forget their name every week. Well, you uh, move on to your next Miami one. Miami is look. horrible. They've lost all sense of anything it takes to be a good program. They're a complete mess, and it's pretty funny. Yeah. Texas A&M, absolute mess. They're an embarrassment. But Jimbo signed on forever. So, good luck, Texas A&M fans. Auburn fired Brian Harson. Cristobal. Yes, Mario Cristobal <clears throat> brought his stale offense to Miami, and they have less talent. But he's still getting five-star recruits because that bag is huge. Mm-hmm. So, we'll see what happens with Miami. And USF fired their coach, too. Uh, former Clemson offensive coordinator, Jeff Scott. I believe he won one FBS game in three years. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Congratulations, USF. Yeah. Nice. A lot of people stinking it up. <laughs> so college football kind of at a <clears throat> kind of at their breaking point. Not too many big games slated on the schedule coming up necessarily. Um so like we said, we'll get into more college basketball next week. Talk about the Big Ten and stuff like that. Um NBA. Uh there's also not a ton of NBA news, but the Nets did decide they are gonna go with Jacques Vaughn. As their head coach, he was their interim for now, and now he is their full-time head coach. Uh, it sounds like the deal with Ime Udoka fell through because of concerns from female workers uh, within the Nets organization. Um, they just didn't feel fully comfortable with it, which is totally acceptable. I felt like it was kind of a weird push for Udoka after just being suspended for the year by the Celtics. So probably the right move not to bring any more drama into the nets than they already have because that team is a nightmare um but yeah so that's interesting there and then malik what if i told you the Cavs were basically leading the east they're second in the east just behind the bucks no shame there and at the top of the west was the utah jazz well the the Cavs thing is only like halfway surprising a lot of people Figured they would be like be a top five team. But it was surprising taken, that they've meshed so well so right, far. Right. Donovan Mitchell is absolutely locked in. As fast as they've figured it out is the surprise for me. Utah makes no sense. And then there's Utah. I mean, it. I, I understand that they got a bunch of scrappy, good veterans that all want to like prove themselves and mm-hmm. play good basketball. But other teams have done that before, and it never works. Yeah. Plus, you have Will Hardy, who's a first-year, extremely young head coach. Mm-hmm. And it's all just working. <clears throat> and if you look at their team, like, they got a young, a lot of young guys. Walker but- Kessler is playing as their backup center. Mm-hmm. Yeah, THT, who all Lakers fans called horrible yep. and should, said should be out of the NBA last year. He's given them quality minutes. Yep. And then, like, Lori Markkinen is just leading this team. He's an all-star right now. He's <laughs> averaging 22 points yeah. a game, nine rebounds, shooting the three ball well. 
it's like Lori Markkinen has kind of, I, I think a lot of people expected him to do this early in his career. Yeah. He had some injuries. So I don't, I think people kind he lost of lost confidence in Chicago. Yeah. And so like, he's always been a good player. Obviously Jordan Clarkson finally being able to be a starter is huge for him. Colin Sexton being their sixth man kind of has a lot to prove, um, but he's been doing well. Mike Conley's just that solid veteran where he doesn't have to do a whole lot on this team. Jared Vanderbilt is the perfect role-playing power forward. Mm -hmm. He does everything you want him to do. Yep. They got Kelly Olenek, who, I mean, we've seen him. Wherever he goes, he shoots the ball. Yeah, he plays well. Malik Beasley, he ran into some trouble, but, you know, he's he's a good player. Like, there aren't pl – like, they have – Walker Kessler, Oche Abaji, um, Nikhil Alexander Walker. A bunch of, of guys with something to prove. And none of these guys really have to play, but like they have all like Yudoka Azubuke, like just young guys that you thought I haven't would even be seen him play yet. Which no. Is a, yeah. But well, that's kind of what I'm, my point is. Like you would have expected those guys to be getting more minutes because you expect these veterans to maybe struggle or be more of the same, but they've all elevated their game and it, it's it's Wow. Yeah. And if you watch highlights of jazz games, those fans are going absolutely nuts for this team. Mm -hmm. Like it, it is, I did, I, I, there's no way to explain it. Mm -hmm. Like it, no matter how you describe it in the players on this team, it makes no sense. Yeah. Which is why I think it won't last long, mm -hmm. but I, it's happening mm -hmm. for some reason. It's all just coming together for some reason. Yeah. Um, the rest of the West is kind of, you know, typical wild. Phoenix seven and three, Portland seven and three, Denver seven and three, Dallas six and three, Memphis seven and four. Like it's all over the place. Again, still very early in the season, but you know, it is what it is. Lakers still can't get going. Uh they're gonna have to make some drastic change here pretty soon. Darvin Ham recently said this is the team they have most likely. Yeah. So good. <laughs> yeah. Good. Um, let's take a couple minutes to talk about the Pistons. Not too much to talk about in the the East. Uh, really. Um, Can I say something real quick? Go for it. It's time to get rid of the French guy. Yeah. That that young French kid, he hasn't gotten any better mm -hmm. over three years. Yep. It almost looks like he doesn't work on his game. Like, yeah. how, how do I have more... <laughs> this is so disrespectful, but how do I have more skill on offense than him? I don't know. You've seen me play basketball, Joey. I can do a spin move <laughs> and make a layup with both hands, correct? Yes. I can and cross somebody over, can't I? I would like to say that Malik is more of a facilitator for the most part, and <laughs> yes, I, but I still probably agree with you. Can Killian Hayes do these things from what you've seen? <sighs> no. I've never seen him do a spin move. I've never seen him do a cross, a good crossover. He can't He can't do simple things. Yeah. I, I don't understand why. He can't do simple basketball moves. And his jumper hasn't progressed that much either. No. No, it hasn't. No, and I, I agree with you. And I even said it last year. Like, I'm I'm over the Killian Hayes thing. I get that he's stinking 20 years old or whatever. But typically, Listen. these guys, if they are that talented, you will see it. I mean, even on the other side, like, the other guy that was in a similar boat was RJ Hampton. We've seen... Well, R.J. Hampton had, like, extreme, like, scoring skill coming out of high school. Right. And he's, he's shown the ability to come off a bench and hit some shots. Right. But that's what I'm saying. Like, he was also a little skeptical going into drafting him. But we've seen more signs out of R.J. Yeah. Hampton than Killian Hayes. And I would say that Killian Hayes has had more uh, opportunities, even. Uh, because R.J. Hampton kind of bounced around for a little bit. So, yeah, I I'm with you. I'm not, not on the Killian bandwagon. It's it's unfortunate because I kind of liked the pick going into it, but I did too. Seeing <laughs> that we could have gotten Taylor Horton Tucker, you know, or not. <laughs> I'm off with names. That Tyrese Halliburton. Um, that man, that draft could have been so good. It's even weirder seeing like how they've hit on almost every move since him. Mm -hmm. But like they started. Well, with even him right and, after him, they took Sadiq Bay and Isaiah Stewart. Yeah. And those guys have worked out great. But I, I really, I, I want somebody to like write an article 
like a long article about what has happened with him. Mm -hmm. Because how how do you not develop any skill at all? Yeah. In three seasons. I just don't, like, it doesn't matter with age. Mm -hmm. He was a high, he was considered a high level young prospect coming out of France. Yeah. He played well in the league he was in. Mm -hmm. And it just, nothing. Yeah, but I, this does happen sometimes. Right. But I'd, I'd like to, like, get a closer look on how this happened. Yeah. Sometimes you got to take a swing on a guy. Pistons took a swing. They missed. It's unfortunate. But back to positive Pistons things. The other young guys. Yeah. Jaden Ivey has looked great. Uh, he had a double-double the other night. Um, Jalen Dern, his energy and his athleticism, plus. Mm -hmm. All pluses. Isaiah Livers hitting his threes. Not like crazy consistently yet, but it's obvious like he he will get better as a shooter. Right. Cade. Cade's getting back on track. Yeah. He started off a little shaky, I would say. Um, his efficiency still needs to go up, in my opinion, but you know that's really not that big of a deal for this team at the moment. Um, but it's promising. Sadiq's starting to get into a rhythm now. He started the season off slow. Um. Still waiting on Alec Burks to come back. I know he's more he's the veteran guy, but didn't Nerlens Noel play a little bit in like the last two uh-huh. games? I swear I saw him in for like a minute or two. Maybe I'll double check. He played against the Cavs. Okay. So like a week ago, just about. Um so he's played sparingly, but yeah. So we're getting some of our, our veteran guys back. But I don't know. I I like the team still. I'm liking where they're going. Um not winning a whole lot, but you know, making yeah. a comeback win against uh, the Thunder is big, in my opinion. The Thunder, actually, a team that's been kind of uh, shocking some people. Shea Gil- listen, man. People forgot Shea about Gilgis. Shea. I don't know how they did. Last but- last year, they had to sit him because they were winning too much. Right well, now, they're four and six, and he's playing like a superstar. He was also in trade rumors, and I said, I don't, I don't get why they would do that. But I listen. I I kind of. I'm kind of with, like with those rumors, but that's a, that's for another time. Yeah, well, <laughs> I I didn't agree with them, but anyway, so we got some things about the Pistons that are exciting, interesting to see what will happen, uh, where they'll go, but promising yeah. so far. Also, uh, underrated story: Isaiah Stort has been like in, insanely efficient, playing really good on both sides of the ball. Like he's he's still improving, mm-hmm. and I, like I don't know whether or not. I think I still want Jalen Dern to be the starter at some point. Yeah. But Isaiah, but yeah, Beef Stu, he's just, he's playing really well. Mm-hmm. And he's improving. Yeah. Like I said before, when, you know, he was taking maybe too many threes, in my opinion, I don't think he needs to be like a focal point of the offense. I think he's great as an enforcer doing what he does, spot up threes every once in a while, sure. Um, but just don't get carried away with it. And, and not saying that Jalen Duran would also be, you know, an offensive focal point, but. I think being able to put both of those guys on the, out on the floor at the same time is actually pretty nice. So, yeah, we'll see. Um, any other NBA news or teams you wanted to talk about real quick before we go uh, on to the NFL? Uh, the DeJounte and Trey Young pairing has been a success so far. Mm-hmm. They just blew out the Bucks. A.J. Griffin had 24 off the bench. That's a great sign. The rookie out of Duke. Mm-hmm. Things are looking good for Atlanta. Um, Toronto, they're only six and five, but they're scary to me. Yeah, Pascal Siakam, I think he's hurt right now, so that's the thing that's going to stink for them. He's he might be out a while. I can't remember, um, but he was back to being that guy yeah. again. They they have moments where they look like a like a top three Eastern team, mm-hmm. and they 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 just, they just got to keep growing. Cleveland, obviously, they're just. They've gelled so quickly, and Donovan Mitchell is just dominating. Yeah. It's great to see. And Darius Garland, off of his eye injury, mm-hmm. played great against the Celtics. That was an awesome game. Um, What else? Miami has not looked great mm-hmm. to start this season. It looks like something is missing again. Yeah. But you once told me that Kyle Lowry was basically washed, and he's been playing pretty good for them. So Has he? I, I haven't. I literally haven't heard a word about Kyle Lowry. Well, I maybe mean, it's because they're four and seven. Yeah, and I mean, it's not like he's blowing anybody away, but he's doing like normal Kyle Lowry things, in my opinion. Okay. Um, he is averaging thirteen points a game, four and a half assists, six 
or six assists, four and a half rebounds, a couple steals. So that's like, decent. He's doing his job as being more of a, a facilitator than having to be uh, taking on more of the workload. I think the biggest problem with them is like, and this is no knock against him, but Max Struess is their fourth leading scorer. Like, I mean, he's been shooting the ball really yeah. well, so I, I can't say a lot, but still, like. This is what a lot of Heat fans were hoping they would, like, try to trade for Brad Beal or something because mm-hmm. even they, they knew they needed another high level, which they're starting t- Tyler Hero. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, they paid him, and they're looking for him to step and up. And I, I think it's weird that they've kind of gone away from Duncan Robinson, and I get that. Like, I mean, I've, after I, he had some rough moments last year. Yeah. And I get that he's like a defensive liability and things like that, but we like Max Struess is like similar player to where he does more though. Yeah, he he can do a little more off the dribble and things like that, but I don't know. It's just it is a weird situation. It doesn't really help. So, but yeah, on in the West, Luka Doncic is just he looks like the one. Mm. He he looks like he's on his way to an all time great career. He's averaging thirty six and yeah. making it look easy. Mm-hmm. Portland is good for now. I still don't believe in them. Yeah. But they're playing good basketball. Um, Minnesota. They are the worst offensive team in, in the league. I looked, I saw a stat that they are the, at least I think efficiency rating. They are the least efficient yeah. offense in the league. Anthony Edwards can't play his game fully because Rudy Gobert is in the paint. Hmm. And he can't dunk the ball because of that. On defense, it honestly hasn't helped a ton. I mean, I, I don't think either of us were super excited about that trade. Yeah, it, I thought it yeah. helped their team, but I don't know. Yeah, Golden State has to find their mojo again. Jordan Poole hasn't been great. The bench hasn't been great. I'm not worried. Clay Thompson is off. Steph is Steph. I'm not worried about that team. I think James Wiseman is a worry. The other pieces will probably get on track, but James Wiseman just isn't fitting at all. No. And I, I don't know if he will. And I hate to give a shout out to Chris. Uh but man, some of those young guys on the Spurs are fun to watch. Keldon Johnson and Devin Vassell are they could be the next next up. Like I'm surprised. I, just because of how they play, I have to disagree. Like they will never be popular. No. The, of the, course the, not. Their styles of people will never pay attention to them outside of mm-hmm. like Texas. Right. Like, they're going to be efficient and have good numbers. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, they, they don't have that standout, flashy style of play. They're right. just, yeah, regular qu- quality basketball players. Yeah. Yeah. But you never know. They could get – it. all it takes is one guy like Memphis. Without John Morant, their style of play is pretty boring. Don't you think? I think they still, they still played really exciting ball when John was out last year. Like, when they were beating teams and nobody thought they should have beat, the, beat them – and they were still having highlight play. Like they, they just played an exciting brand of basketball. Okay. I mean, the the Spurs. They, I agree, they do have young players, but I, I don't know. I think Memphis is different. Okay. All right, NFL Week Ten once again. We got about twenty some minutes left, so we got to go sort of quickly. But so we'll touch on the big ones. Last week, Week Nine, Malik, you got nine correct picks. I got nine correct picks. <laughs> this is this is ridiculous at this point. I believe it's both of us might have to start taking swings. I believe it's three straight weeks. I feel like we've been taking swings. Um, I, here I don't, there. Uh, just slightly, I mean, I so so last week I got Detroit. I felt like that was a good one to go for. Uh, you got Cincinnati, which turned out to be not even close. Um, I took New England. I took Minnesota, which was a nail biter. You took Jacksonville, which man, Vegas, that's that's bad. Uh, you took Seattle, which I don't know. I keep thinking Arizona's going to turn it around, but they are not. So not huge swings, I guess, but good enough. Um, so on to week ten. Here we go, Malik. You're sitting at sixty three correct picks on the year. I'm at sixty five. So, and right off the bat, Thursday night, tomorrow night, we have a banger of a game. <laughs> NFC South. <laughs> The NFL's best oh, division, closest division, Atlanta at Carolina. The NFC South has become the NFC least. Yeah. We just saw Carolina uh, have a game-winning touchdown against Atlanta turn into a game loss in overtime 
uh, because of missed kicks and DJ Moore taking his helmet off. Atlanta's got Cordero Patterson back. Um, they're just still a boring team that finds ways to win. I don't know who I want to pick in this game. I'm going who's, Atlanta. Who's going to be the starter for Carolina? No idea. I'm I'm going Atlanta. Okay, well, I will definitely go Carolina because I have Carolina players on my fantasy team. Yes, my fantasy team is not that good. Um, but they're at home. Let's hope for the best. I love Let's hope for the best. Start Sam I love the Darnold. Positivity. What if we start Sam Darnold? What if? What if? I don't know if he's even healthy enough. Detroit at Chicago. Justin Fields. Do I hate to say that I like watching Justin Fields in Chicago? Listen, that game last week, he showed something. Yeah. He showed a big sign mm -hmm. of something special. 178 rushing yards yeah. and a good passing day. Yeah, he's looked good throwing the ball. He's He's been hard to tackle even. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. They're kind of a kind of a fun team, actually. If and they I can hate get that. receivers. I mean, they got Claypool. They, they got out. Darnell Mooney, which I think are – Solid receivers, obviously they're they're not like special. Not no, yeah, they're not they're not world beaters, but I think they're solid. They are solid, but they they need more than solid to get the most out of Justin Fields. Uh, I also love Detroit coming off a win against Green Bay, breaking the entire Listen, Green Bay oh psyche. My God. It's amazing. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers was so animated. He was so after bad. his mistakes. He was, was not good. Yeah. So I hope he was not yelling at other players. Did they just decide not to like? Aaron Jones is like our best player. We're just not. I don't know. I think I heard he got banged up in the game a little bit. I didn't watch the game as closely because YouTube TV uh, was doing free NFL Red Zone. So normally I would have the Lions game on the big screen with Red Zone on my phone. But this week I just had Red Zone on, so I didn't really pay attention closely to the Lions. Um, but I I think Aaron Jones was a little banged up in the game. Uh, but I, know, I don't know for sure. They still got to run the ball. Yeah. Run the ball, man. Yeah, especially against the Lions, who are notorious for being bad against the run. Um, and that's what Chicago does well. So I'm a little nervous about this game. But Chicago, Chicago has been in a lot of shootouts. You're going Bears. Bears. Oh, I'm back to the Lions train then. Um, the Bears. Lions, I feel like, are going to put up points again. And Chicago's been in a lot of shootouts. They've come up short in a lot of them. I'm hoping Detroit can just... You know, get back to their bread and butter. If the game was in Detroit, I think I'd take the Lions. Yeah. But with it being in Chicago. Yeah, it's tough. I Yeah. Um, hopefully, DeAndre Swift looks a little healthier, can get a couple more snaps because he is huge for this team. Um, I'll take Detroit, but I'm okay if they lose because I'm still on board with let's get a high draft pick. Seattle at Tampa Bay. This game getting played in Germany. What is this? This is the first time NFL has been played in Germany, I believe. I think so. Um, man, so, I don't. This is Tampa's, a weird. Tampa still didn't look great, but Tom Brady had no. another game winning drive. Tom Brady finally had, you know, that drive. You, it's one of those drives where you see a lot of quarterbacks at the end of games. It's like, why couldn't they have done that for the first three quarters or four quarters up until the last minute? Uh, Tom Brady looked good in that final drive. Can they keep it going? I don't know. Tampa Bay has been weird. Their defense is still good, though, um, so maybe they can slow Seattle down. Seattle's been solid. They keep winning games. Every time you think, when is Seattle going to stop? They just figure out ways. I don't, I don't get it. Kenneth Walker has been insane, though. Before the season, I, I said, why is Pete Carroll still coaching? Mm -hmm. They need to clean house. <laughs> this is all a mistake. Geno Smith isn't going to be good. DK Metcalf needs to go. How could you get Everything rid of Russell Wilson? Terrible. Everything is horrible. And uh, they're good. <laughs> they have one of the best running backs in the league. They're a quality already. team. Pete Carroll is coaching his butt off. Seahawks. Yeah. I, they all Seahawks. Basically, all their draft picks have hit, which is wild. And I don't know. And uh, that's beyond my they guy. They were awful defense like the past two years. They were mm -hmm. terrible on defense the past two years. Yeah. And they're still not great by any means. They do, but they do enough. Yeah. It's wild. Seahawks. I, okay. Well, let's keep. Tampa let's, Bay might win this game. Let's but, keep the 50 uh, 50 going. I'll take Tampa Bay. Yeah. I agree with you, though. I think Seattle has a good chance. This is an up in the air game. And if Seattle wins this game, like Tampa Bay, man, they're going to let Atlanta or Carolina take the lead Listen, again. They almost lost to the Rams last week. Mm -hmm. They almost did. 
and the Rams looked real bad in that second Listen, half. Stafford, it might be over. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> Helping us with our drafts. Um, Minnesota at Buffalo. This is interesting. Minnesota's- Minnesota has a better record than the Bills. Yeah, Bills just lost the Bills, to the Jets. Yeah, which like the Jets are real, and the, the weird- Jets are real. And the weird part was that first drive for Buffalo. You know, you're you're excited about the Stephon Diggs Sauce Gardner matchup. Stephon Diggs just makes him look silly and beats him right away for like a 40 yard gain. And then Stephon Diggs disappeared in the second half. Sauce Gardner locked in. And I don't know. Josh Allen threw some dumb passes. He said after the game, you can't win when your quarterback plays like trash. Yeah. So which is, he hasn't played great, which is why I think he bounces back in a major way. He's got an elbow strain, though. People are a little nervous about it. Right elbow, like it's throwing. Yeah. And it happened mm. with two plays left in the game, I believe, last week. Um, but is he playing this week? He's supposed to be. But they don't. This is questionable. There is a chance that he could miss. <sighs> Man. And Vikings have some momentum. So <clears throat> I, I would err on the side that he's going to play. But there is that possibility. The Vikings have been doing nothing but playing teams close. Mm-hmm. That is that is all they do, and they don't have a ton of impressive wins necessarily. Yeah, they, they they're playing everybody close, so they're just barely <sighs> Bills. I I they're would say, bills. like think about Buffalo's defense is still there, um, and the other thing I will say too is if Josh Allen doesn't play, their backup, Case Keenum. Yes. Him and Stefan Diggs played together in Minnesota. Is Kirk Cousins better than an 80% Josh Allen? No. <laughs> 70 So after, So I'll tell you the, the one thing that a lot of people brought up. After uh, Josh Allen's elbow got hit, now this could be adrenaline. The last play of the game was that throw to Gabe Davis. It was the he longest. He threw that thing like 70-something yards. It was the longest recorded pass of this season, and I think it was 69 yeah. yards. It was in the air for like four seconds. It was ridiculous. Which is insane. And it it kind of hit Gabe Davis in the chest like he could have yeah, caught it. Yeah, Gabe Davis definitely missed the catch. Um, I'll go Minnesota because I think this is one where, like, you just went Seattle. I took Tampa Bay. I think this is a similar boat where Buffalo probably should win, but there's a chance for Minnesota. Uh, Denver at Tennessee. Denver coming off their bye. Have they figured Listen, anything out? Uh, Tennessee gets another win just by coasting. Like, the, the Tennessee is about to win this division by default, the AFC South. And they've played and Malik Willis the last two weeks, and he has not looked good. He looked better last week, but Derrick Henry is this team. Yeah, Tennessee. I'm not saying that quarterback in Denver's name anymore. The dude, the dude with the Subway commercial. I kind of want to take Denver. I don't know why. He might have the most awkward, like, su- like athlete food commercial of all time. Yeah, it's just no music and him talking. Let's for keep like it going. Two minutes. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Denver. Let's keep it going. Oh, really? Yeah, I'll take them. Good luck. It's gonna be their Good defense. Luck with that, please. But uh, they gave up Bradley Chubb, so Derrick Henry might run all over him. I don't know. Uh, Jacksonville at Kansas City. I, we can't take Jacksonville. No, they, we can. We can. Like Jacksonville's fun. They, yeah. you know, Travis Etienne is turning into a beast. But week to week, you don't know what Trevor Lawrence is going to do. Yeah. Last week, he was he missed like five passes. He's kind of been the prototypical uh, young quarterback. Like, he's beating bad defenses, struggling against good defenses. Mm-hmm. Kansas City, I think, is kind of middle of the road, but you, you can't keep up with Patrick The Chargers Mahomes. game was his one flash of, like, him arriving, but he hasn't arrived. Yeah. Wait till he gets Calvin Ridley. Cleveland at Miami. Cleveland also coming off there by... Miami coming off a close win against Chicago. Miami's offense is rolling. I I I, I have no <clears throat> I can't imagine a scenario where Jacoby Brissett outduels Tua in Miami. Yeah. I I can't see. It that. would have to be a Cleveland defensive thing and Cleveland's defensive strength is not their secondary. So, I don't I don't know how any team really stops Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill, but, you know. Yeah, I also agree. Go with Miami, especially at home. More numbers. Another 300-yard passing day. For Tua. Yeah. Houston at the Giants. I actually think it's kind of interesting. Are the Giants coming off a bye? Yes. Okay. The uh, Texans aren't good. Houston is the worst rushing defense in the league. Saquon Barkley is back. 
I can't imagine. So what makes this interesting then? <laughs> Houston's just one of those weird teams. They hung around with with Philly for yeah. like a, like two and a half quarters. I don't know. I'm Brandon Cooks might still not be playing in this game. He wasn't at practice today, but he was there yesterday. Tell us why the Texans upset the Giants, Joey. Tell us, please. I don't give it, give us a weird reason. scenario where they're able to stop Saquon Barkley. Pick the Texans, do it. Do it. I don't Pick know. Davis I, Mills. I don't know if Pick I. Pick Davis it. Mills. All right, you pressured me into it. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll go I'll for it. I'll take the Giants. <laughs> yeah, that, that's fair. Totally fair. Uh, that's my swing pick. There we go. Okay. Um, New Orleans at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh also. Neither of these teams by. look good. Wow, New Orleans. I thought they were gonna be decent, and man, they, look, they got they look awful. stuffed by the Ravens. They look. Bad. Now the Ravens did add Roquan Smith. Ravens secondary looked much better um, after they struggled for a while, which didn't make sense to me. Um, yeah, and then Pittsburgh. They're talking about going to Jalen Warren over Najee Harris. Najee Harris, it has been weird yeah. the way he's played this mm-hmm. season. And I know their offensive line has been bad, but he has not helped. Yeah. And Jalen Warren has looked, you know, he's looked a little better. I'm going to go with a weird scenario because there's no regular scenario in this game. Mm-hmm. Mike Tomlin has another great one left in him. And they this is just a weird, like, 24 to, like, 10 game where the Steelers just make a few big plays and New Orleans can never get it fully going on offense. Mm-hmm. Steelers win. Okay. I'll take New Orleans. I think it's a good enough uh, chance. Uh, but, yeah, I'm not super confident in this team. Now, this game right here. Oh, boy. The best game of the week of the century. Indianapolis against where do you, where do you start? the Vegas Raiders. Where do you start with Indianapolis, first of all? No, where do we start with Las Vegas? Because I will tell you what. Before we get into Indianapolis, okay. if Las Vegas loses this game. <laughs> to the Jeff Saturday Colts. They need to uh, fire everyone, cut every single player, and maybe decide on going to the XFL. Indianapolis, as you somewhat alluded to, fired Frank Reich, added Jeff Saturday of ESPN, former Colts offensive lineman, is now their head coach. Interim, yeah. Yes. Interim head coach. No coaching experience whatsoever. Yes. A few, like a year or two of high school, I'm like sh- 10 years ago. You know, I'm sure he's a brilliant mind. I always think offensive linemen have to be one of the smarter players on the yeah. team. He'll know what he's doing to a certain extent, but he just named a 30-year-old play caller to call their offensive plays. And there is no one on this team except for there's like one random coach that has a little bit of college experience. There is no one on this team that has offensive play calling experience. That is like sending me out there. I am turning 30 years old next month. Do I think I could go call plays for Indianapolis Colts? Maybe. But I have no idea what I'm doing. Listen, you you play Madden enough. Yeah. <laughs> Brush up those That's skills. what I'm saying. Halfback dive. Let's go, Jonathan Taylor. Uh, hope for the let's best. Let's do it. Read option, Sam Ellinger. Let's go. It, yeah. I. <laughs> let's do it. And they're still sticking with Sam Ellinger. At this point, that's what it is. Brush up your Madden skills. Yeah. Jonathan Taylor is supposed to be back, but we don't know. Listen, I hope Jeff is nice with the controller. I hope he is. Okay, I have a question for you. Would you rather take this Indianapolis Colts team or would you take the Denver Broncos having to go to their emergency quarterback of Kendall Hinton? Hinton. (laughs) I'd rather take this team. (laughs) Okay. That's a fair question, though. I'd I'd, I'd, Listen, (laughs) Sam Ellinger might be a career backup, Mm -hmm. but come on, man. (laughs) it's <laughs> curious that's, that's that's too extreme it's too much yeah but with this inexperienced coaching staff listen let, I, at this point i, I want to see nate nate peterman versus sam ellinger let's go all the way Ooh. let's do it Ooh, okay. he's on the roster i know let's go i know i'm taking I'm josh taking, mcdaniels is getting fired if they lose i'm taking the raiders i'm taking the raiders too i just off the principle of they can't lose this game. <laughs> I like the Raiders team, and they have played bad. So if they if they lose this game, oh man, it's gonna be wild. It's gonna be it's gonna be wild. I, I'm kind of in for it watching this game. Dallas at Green Bay. 
Aaron Rodgers, where are you? <laughs> Who are you? It's listen incredible. There, do you remember that time Aaron Rodgers went on the radio and just spelled out "relax"? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this time to say C O O K E D. Cooked. That that's that's pretty much what this is in Green Bay. Yeah, yeah. cooked. They just lost Romeo Dubs for. I think four to six weeks. Christian Watson, I don't know if he's going to ever be able to get over his concussion does it, does stuff. It, I, don't, I honestly don't think his career can be like be salvaged here. It, this might be very extreme, but I, don't, I just don't see him and Aaron Rodgers clicking. Yeah. He's still a raw receiver, mm-hmm. so I don't – like Aaron Rodgers is impatient. He doesn't know a lot. Romeo Dub started to learn a little. Now he's hurt. Mm-hmm. Randall Cobb is out. I just – yeah. Unless Christian Watson is traded, I don't know how. Or unless they trade away Aaron Rodgers and they just go with the backup. Mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't see what Christian Watson's career turns into. Because yeah. this is just a bad situation. Mm-hmm. And Aaron Rodgers' career is just, it's going to be weird. He's the guy that should have been traded to Denver. Yeah. That's, that's what should have happened. Because mm-hmm. I guarantee Denver would probably be winning right now. Even with... The Hackett man. <laughs> Even with Hackett. Yeah. I I think he might have been able to get Hackett fired by now. Or or they might have worked together. Yeah. I think Denver is probably a good team right now if Aaron is in Denver, but that's another scenario in another universe. Yep. And right now we're with this one and it's a travesty. And where we're taking Dallas, unfortunately. Yeah. Tony Pollard. They they gotta start him eventually. Jerry Jones what, says what he Ezekiel did in, Elliott will take us as far as what he, he did in that Chicago game, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a weird. That's a weird one too. Arizona at the Rams. God, this is a bad game. Yeah, this is just a ugly. I'm going. I'm going to go Arizona, just because they have DeAndre Hopkins, and I think they'll hit a few big plays. What are the Rams? Cooper Cup. <sighs> wow. Mm-hmm. It's incredible how fast things change. Yeah. Remember when Allen Robinson was supposed to help? Remember that? Remember when people said that the Bears were the problem for Allen Robinson? Man, I, I believe it. Are we sure? It. I believed it. I've been wrong on so many NFL players. I don't think I can believe in anybody anymore. Yeah. I just got to quit. Mm-hmm. L- luckily, I don't do fantasy because I was, I would, I, if I cared, I would still be last probably. Yeah. Uh, I'm t- I'll tell you, I I watch, I pay attention to a lot of stuff for fantasy, and it's it's a tough year. It's a weird year. Listen, number one pick, Jonathan Taylor. That's all you need to say. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll say. take the Rams just on the fact that you know Arizona just they find ways to lose. They do. Um, Sean they, McVay is still a better coach than Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah, even in this bad year. And the Cardinals find themselves trailing all the time. So who knows? Chargers at the 49ers. Let me check the. I really haven't paid much attention to these teams in the past few weeks. Well, Christian McCaffrey is a 49ers. Well, so. <laughs> outside of that, yeah, Christian going crazy. I'm taking the 49ers. Debo Samuel, questionable. Kyle Juszczyk, questionable. Juwan Chargers, Jennings, questionable. Chargers are without Mike Williams. Keenan Allen, can he play a full season now? I don't think he's going to. I still think he's going to be out because hamstring is such a lingering injury. I don't. I just don't think he's going to get right. And right now it's just Justin Herbert and Austin Eckler. Yeah, I'm going Golden State. Golden State. Golden State. <laughs> I mean, there's the same area. Golden State might be playing that yeah. night, but I'm not sure. I'm going San Francisco. Yeah, me too. There there have been a lot of uh, Justin Herbert doubters lately that say like His he's, team he's is a injured. full fake. They got a lot of injuries. I can't I can't blame Justin Herbert. I don't either, but I, I think it's kind of surprising how a lot of people have been like, mm-hmm. he's always just been numbers. It's like his team – they they get hurt every year. At this point, it's obvious that yeah. their coach just he's he's not that guy. Yeah. I don't think he's that guy. And Monday night, Washington at Philadelphia. Is Taylor Heineke gonna be the starter the rest of the season? Start Sam people, Howell. People are saying that he might be. Start Sam. Yeah, I kind of agree. I like Taylor Heineke. He's a fun story, but try he gives out, it everything he's got. Try out the young guy. Philly. I think it's they're easy. They're no man. Yeah. They're, they're rolling. They are rolling. And even when they got tested by Houston for a half, they, they bounced back from there. They're just hard to stop. Yeah. Their defense is incredible. Their offense is well-oiled. Like, I don't know. Yeah. And that is why I'm taking the Washington. No, okay. I'm not taking Washington. 
All right. And there we go. Week 10 in the books. We're already halfway through the NFL season. I can't, I, it's crazy. Um, we're already talking about college basketball. I don't understand. Like I said, next week, we'll try to talk about more college basketball, do more of a preview, especially at least the Big Ten and some of the top schools. Um, probably go light on college football. NBA, we'll just, you know, if there's any news, we'll talk about it. And then we're already talking about NFL Week 11. It's crazy. Time is flying by. This has been Views from the Sidelines. We'll see you guys next time. Do you care about the Astros winning the World Series at all? Nah. I guess they didn't cheat this time, so that's fine. It's good to see Verlander still win. Uh, He's I winning at everything. I haven't liked his, his demeanor lately. Hey, talk that stuff. Maybe next time.